chapter 19. Verse number 1, Luke chapter 19, verse number 1. I'm going to take a trip down Sycamore Street this morning. Luke chapter 19. All right, let's read verse 1. And Jesus entered and passed through Jericho, and behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus. Lord, we do thank you this morning for your goodness and for your grace. I ask you, God, to help me preach. I ask you, God, to give me liberty, God. I pray that you would forgive my sins. Lord, wash and cleanse my mind. I also pray, God, you'd wash and cleanse the minds of these. I pray you'd bless everyone that showed up this morning to hear your word preached, to sing uh, your praises, God. I pray that you would help us this morning. I pray, God, you'd stir us up. Yes. Lord, some folks will be waiting until next week to start revival, but I pray, oh God, that you'd start revival yes. in our hearts this morning. Help us, God, strengthen us, and I guess the, the most sincere and shortest prayer that we could pray is just help, Lord, and I see that. In the book of Psalm, many times, help, Lord, because we need your help. And I pray, O oh Lord, that you deal with hearts this morning. And God, this morning, I'm not against the people. I'm just for God, and I'm for uh, your principles. And Lord, I know that living the Christian life is the best possible life we can live. Amen. A lot of people looking for joy in other places. It's just not going to be found out there. And I pray, O oh God, you'd help us this morning to look for Jesus. And I pray you'd help us to that end. In Jesus Christ's name, we pray these things. Amen. Amen. All right. Luke chapter 19 and verse 1. Jesus entered and passed through Jericho, and behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus. First of all, I want to point out to you this morning that this is a this message and this passage of Scripture, it's a passage of grace. And so this message is going to be a message of grace. You might think it sounds, you know, I don't know. It depends on who you are. Some might think it's too hard, and somebody, some of you might think it's too soft. I don't know about that. I'm not trying to really preach it hard or preach it soft, just trying to preach the truth to you this morning. Amen. And I pray you'd take it just as it's given that way, uh, as a help and a blessing. See, we got folks running the house already. Amen. Uh, but that's all right, amen, and with God that uh, folks would start running the aisles over grace again, amen. And uh, we talked about uh, a little, having a little dignity this morning, but if you've got enough dignity, it won't let you shout and run a little bit. You've got too much dignity, amen. Now, I don't want to get too far on one side of the coin or another, but it's nothing wrong with shouting, amen. It's a sad day when the NFL and the NBA stole their shout, amen. 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 It's a sad day if you let booze and pornography and all this stuff steal you shout. Amen. Because it'll sure do it. It'll sure do it. But listen, if you got caught up in that stuff, I'm here to tell you this morning that the message of Jesus Christ is a message of grace. And when we talk about the gospel, we're talking about the gospel of the grace of God. You was not worthy to have God come and deal with you, but he came and dealt with you anyway. You wasn't worthy of salvation, but he shed his blood for you. And I don't know if you know how, how far uh, those two points are apart, your worthiness and his bloodshed. I don't know if you know how far away those things are, but they're mighty far. But God's grace reaches as far as from the east from the west is, amen? And so we got a good God that's graceful, amen? I, I, let, let, and having said that, let me put a challenge out to you, amen? Uh, you uh, elected me to come here as your assistant pastor, so I'm going to do a little bit of pastoring this morning right up front, amen? Let me challenge you this. If you're called to preach, put your hand up in the air. I want to challenge you, whatever you got in your mind now, Put that aside. Whatever you got down in your little sermon book, put that aside. And I want to challenge you. I want to challenge you to preach the gospel for your next 20 sermons. For your next 20 sermons. Brother Squeaky, I've been doing a little uh, experiment over the last couple of years. I find out a lot of young preachers don't know how to preach the gospel. They got a pet peeve. They got an axe to grind. And I'm all for grinding axes, amen. If I go to a camp meeting and the preacher, the moderator stands up and says, we, ain't got, we don't want to grind no axes this week, I just go home because the only reason I came was to get my axe grinded, amen, to get my edge sharpened. I don't mind you grinding axes, but the, a preacher ain't worth his salt unless he can preach the gospel. And I'm not, I'm talking, yeah, uh, I'm, yeah, God came to save sinners and I want to uh, talk about those sinners. Now listen, 
I'm talking about John chapter 3, and I'm talking about Romans 3, and 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 1 John 1. Uh, how come those messages never occurred to young preachers this day and time? Everybody wants controversy. Now, there's a, I'm sick of controversy. Really, I, I really am. And I said a couple years ago, I set my mind to preaching the gospel, and I try to preach the gospel as much as I possibly can. Now, uh, you, you say, well, God has to lead me, brother. And God's going to tell me what to preach. I understand that. I understand that. But a man that can't preach the gospel probably can't be led in what to preach. Amen? And so let me challenge you. For your next 20 sermons, put away your pet peeve. Put away what you think everybody needs to hear. And preach some good gospel sermons. So why don't people ever get saved in churches? Because nobody's emphasizing the grace of God. Now listen, God has strict principles, and he ain't never got rid of them. Amen? Amen? The, the Bible said, Paul asked the question, he said, do we get rid of the law that grace may abound? Do we do, we do away with the law? He said, God forbid. No, sir, we established the law. Amen? But we can establish the law and we can have principle in our life because Jesus gave his blood to let poor old sinners like you and me have an opportunity to come to the table. Amen? Old oh, Mephibosheth, he wouldn't, he wouldn't yell in legalist because David was in control of everything. He was just glad to get up to the table. Amen? Have some bread. When you're eating king's bread, you ain't got to worry about legalist. Amen? You can just say, Amen. Praise the Lord. And you can get happy about things rather than sad about things. Amen? Mad at somebody for standing up for right. I'm glad there is a right. Yes, sir. Ain't you? We live in a world today where the people are talking about tell your truth. The only problem with your truth is your truth is a lie. I and mean, I'm for telling God's truth because God's truth, that's king's bread, amen? You say, how do you know it's king's bread? Because Jesus said, I'm that bread that came down from heaven. You eat that bread, amen? That's good for you. It's good for you. But this message here, we're talking about, of course, Zacchaeus, and he climbed up the sycamore tree. I think everybody learned that in Sunday school if he was paying attention or if he showed up for Sunday school. Amen. You learned about Zacchaeus climbing up the sycamore tree. So I say we're going to visit Sycamore Street this morning. And it's a message of grace. It's a message of grace. You say, why? Because if you remember, uh, the New Testament calls him Jesus. But, and of course, I'm talking about in the book of Acts. But there's a fellow in the Old Testament named Joshua. And he visited Jericho. And when he left Jericho, wasn't nothing left. Kind of like the Lord told Jonah. He said, you go up to Nineveh and preach the preaching that I bid you. And he said, uh, he, uh, Jonah said, I believe I'll do what I want to. <laughs> I believe I'll go my own way. Amen. And you'll learn later on really what, the, what Jonah was saying to those folks. He said, Lord, if I go up there and preach that old negative message, people will get right. Yep. Yep. And then people ain't our people. Yeah. And then people ain't our kind of people. And we're going to talk about people this morning, but we'll get to that. Jonah said, now, after the people of Nineveh got right, Jonah said, is this not what I told you, Lord? This, this, the thing that happened is they got right. Yeah. And Jonah said, ain't this what I told you would happen? And he's upset because these people got right. But you know, he, the Lord told Jonah to go up there and preach the preaching that I bid you, just a negative old message with no grace in it. And the modern day Christian is hollering grace, 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 and ain't getting right. And no, but Jonah went to Nineveh and said 40 days and God's going to overthrow this place and destroy it. Yeah. Period. No grace, no get right, no altar call, no invitation. Just walked out of the city. That's all God told him to tell him. People that feared God yeah. got on their face and got right. Yeah. And what they get? They got deliverance. Most people come to church, give me my deliverance. Well, old Jonah come into town. They said, you can't come in here. We don't want to hear what you got to say. We don't want your kind around here. And so they didn't come in. They just marched around it seven times and everything fell down. The Bible says the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty to the pulling down of strongholds. Talking about those, th those high things that exalt self against God. Preacher comes with the message of grace and you don't want to hear it. Preacher comes with the message of righteousness and you can't, can't bring that in here. We'll just march around you till you fall. 
You say, well, that'll be the end of it, Brother Mike. Well, that wouldn't end the Jericho. Joshua left it in a pile of rubble. And then one day Jesus come walking through it. There it was. Lo and behold, there was somebody home. There's a man named Zacchaeus there, ain't there? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. You know, I've seen people rebel against the preaching. I said, rebel against the preaching? Yes, sir, rebel against the preaching. No, we, I, I, it, it's me and God. No, it's you rebelling against the preaching. I ain't no preacher going to tell me what to do. And that's probably all through your life. Ain't no boss going to tell me what to do. Ain't no man going to tell me what to do. How many of you ladies ever said that? <laughs> Ain't no man going to tell me what to do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Whose last name you got? I'm not married. You got your daddy's name. Amen. God put a man there for a reason. Amen. Today God, God put a man in your path to preach a gospel message to you, a graceful message to you. Amen. I've seen people... Rebel. I've seen people get mad. I've seen people run. I've seen God tear their lives down. And every once in a while, God get them in a place, have to tear their life down. God start rebuilding it little by little. I thank God for that. I don't take no joy in it. Uh, when I was growing up, and I, I, I got a pastor that I grew up under, and I love him. He's passed away now. But I don't agree with everything he said or everything he done, but I really do appreciate his ministry. And life. But a lot of times he would talk about folks that he tried to preach to and they, they went out and God killed them and did all sorts of terrible things to them. And in the back of my mind, you know, I think some people would probably enjoy that. Oh, you don't do what I say, God's going to kill you. Well, I'd rather just God get you right. I, and if I had my way, we'd do it the easy way. Amen? Amen? I've never taken any joy in God having to beat somebody because they wouldn't listen to my message. My, it's not my message I'm giving you this morning. If it's a message of grace, it's God's message. It's God's message. And listen, if the world had the answers, you wouldn't be here this morning. I say if the world had the message, you wouldn't be here this morning. Amen? I mean, the world doesn't have the answer to your questions. Uh, that grief you got in your heart, the world doesn't have the answer to that. Don't have. That's what they was protecting behind the walls of Nineveh. There's a good message for some of you to preach. What was they hiding behind the walls of Nineveh that they didn't want Joshua to come in there and get? They had their gold and their silver and their fancy garments and they had their pride and every other evil and wicked thing in there. Not only, not only did they didn't want Joshua to come in there and get it, God didn't want him to go in there and get it. He just said, march around it till it falls and then walk away. Amen. That's the way it happened. That's the way it happened. Amen. But one day God come walking back through Jericho. Amen. It must have been noise to broad because this old fellow named Zacchaeus heard about it. Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. Ain't, ain't you glad, uh, for you folks that live in Kenton, ain't you glad God come through there one day? Hmm? I was born and raised in Mount Airy, North Carolina. I'm glad God come through one morning. Amen? Oh, I got plenty of faults and failures. You hang around with me a little while and inspect my life. You can find some stuff that's probably worthy of punishment. But I tell you what, I'm glad God come through Mount Airy, North Carolina. Amen. My old preacher's wife pulled up in their yard when I was about five or six years old, about five years old. Little old gray-haired lady. Got out of the van, come walked up. Is your mom and daddy home, boys? Yeah, go on ahead. I probably shouldn't have done that. That's probably in there drinking beer. I told her to go on in. She went on in. Amen. She didn't even knock on the door. She come out about 15, 20 minutes later and said, you kids are going to ride the van. She didn't ask, did I want to ride the van? <laughs> she asked my mama if we could ride. My mama said we could ride, and we did ride. Amen. We rode the bus and went down there and had this old preacher jump all over us and tell us we was all sinners and going to hell and God was going to judge us and there's none righteous, no, not one, and scared the daylights out of me. We're going to stand before God in the judgment, he said. Well, I tell you what, I, I didn't know what to think about that, but I knew I didn't like it, amen. <laughs> Next thing you know, my mom and dad start riding the bus and my old, my daddy just had come out of Vietnam. Got him some bell-bottom jeans and grew his hair out down the middle of his back, and he was on the road to hell. 
But he started following his little bus kids to church. Got saved by the grace of God. Amen. My little mama following him around. I never will forget. One of some of my first memories is my mom and dad looking like hippies. And every once in a while, mom would be gone. It'd be just me and my stepdad and my brothers there. And he'd take her little bottle and pour a little Budweiser in there and put the lid back on it and hand it to us and start drinking that beer. Boy, we was on the wrong. We was on the wrong road. But that little old lady come by. Y'all want to go to church with us? And we didn't go to church and have somebody tell us how good we was. Right, told us about how we needed the grace of God. Amen. And as my mom and dad begin to come, I've got a picture at the house. And I hope I never lose that picture because it's a picture of my mom and dad when they were it, the very closest to God they've ever been. And I've got a picture of my mother standing in the front yard of the little old poor man's house that we, little, that we lived in, little mill house there in Mount Airy, North Carolina, my mother leaning against the tree. And, and Miss Norman, lady that went to our church, worked for the newspaper, and she uh, took a picture of my mother in the front yard. She looked like an angel because God had done a work in her life. My parents had been through some rocky roads over the years and got away from God and got divorced. But if I ever wonder about what, uh, whether or not the grace of God was real in their life, I look back to those times where God had her looking like a saint. Amen? Yeah. I'm thankful my mother's got back close to God now, but boy, I sure hate the rocky road that she had to travel over the years. For all the rocky roads you've traveled, the grace of God not that far. It's not that far away. It's not that hard to get back. The flesh make it hard for you to get back. But the grace of God, it's nearby. It's close. Paul seen those old pagans on Mars Hill. And he said, uh, you're, you're worshiping an unknown God. He said, but let me tell you about this God you don't know. He said, it's like you're a blind man and you're feeling after him, but he's not very far from you. He's not very far from you. That painted a picture in my mind, Brother Joe, about blind people. They're searching for that one that's going to make everything all right, and they're just, they're just right at him. They're right at him. He's not far. He's not far. You know, you begin to search around in the dark. I think about Jesse walking around blind. A lot of things perception-wise that blind people can't get a hold of. But I can tell you this one thing about something here. You got somebody, like Paul said, them pagans were like blind people searching in the dark. You're looking, you can't find Jesus. I got, I got, uh, I got the solution for you. Instead of just feeling, go, hey, Amen. where are you? Yeah. Amen. Mm -hmm. He'll say, I'm just right here, son. <laughs> yeah. You say, well, why don't he just come to me? He come to the cross. He come down here and lived and, and lived a righteous life for you and bled and died for you. You say, what's that? He turned down your street one day, didn't he? Oh, I'm glad he did. I'm glad he come to Mount Airy, North Carolina. Amen. Ain't you glad he come down Dover one day? I bet, I, I bet you, listen, if I know anything, I know this. I know there's some fellas here. Probably at one time you was probably sitting on a bar stool somewhere. And probably half drunk, I don't know. Maybe God has got to get you drunk to, to, to get, talk some sense to you. Otherwise, you're not listening. But I guarantee you some of you are sitting there and the thought come to you, what about God? What about God? Or some of you might have been down to Dover Downs gambling all your money away and here come God saying, boy, you know you shouldn't be here. And that started something thinking in your mind. Maybe there's something more. Maybe there's something more. Maybe there's something more. Maybe there's something more. And you know the sad thing about it is there is something more. Some people sit on these pews. They, they forgot that Jesus is more, not less. Amen. They forgot what it was like that Jesus come by their way. And their mind starts, their mind starts getting back out there on the dope and on the, on the Budweiser and on their friends and on the good times they're missing. Hey, there ain't nothing better than what happened to you when Jesus come down your way. Amen. Amen. Jesus entered and passed through Jericho, and behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus. His name might have been Ken or Mike or Bob or Bill or Susie or whatever. I hope it ain't a man named Susie, but 
Amen. If it is, it is. But whatever the case is, Jesus come by. Listen, I want you to notice this morning in this passage of Scripture, the Lord knows His name. The Lord knows where He works. The Lord knows His social status and His bank account number. Amen. That's what he says. He said, Behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus, which was chief among the publicans, and he was rich. God knows everything about this man. God knows everything about you this morning. You and your special circumstances. You and your special circumstances. Well, Brother Mike, I would do that, but you don't know my situation. You know, I've had so much bad happen to me. Jesus knows. Jesus knows. I don't have to understand what's happened to you. Brother Joe, there's a lot of bad things that happen to a lot of people in this world. Listen, I sympathize with you over that. I, I hope it never happens to you again. I hope you never have to go through it again. If you've been through a divorce, I hope you never have to go through it again. If a man beats you up, I hope you never have to go through it again. If your wife beats you up, I hope you never have to go through it again. If your dad assaulted you, I hope you never have to go through it again. If you was molested, I hope you never have to go through it again. I understand your problems and your situation. But listen, Jesus shows up in your life to take that stuff away. Amen? Amen. Jesus don't show up in your life to help you ruminate on that stuff. He, he, he come to give you victory over that stuff. He'll give you victory over that stuff. Amen. He'll give you victory when the preacher spits on you a nice clean shirt too. Amen. But I tell you what, he come, listen, he come to give you life and give it to you more abundantly. It's a story of grace. Amen. It's a story of grace. And I realize, listen, the Lord come in your life and you're not going to get everything straightened uh, right up. But listen, as it is now, you're lame. You got no solutions. You don't, I'm talking, I, I don't mean you're lame like you're pathetic. I mean you're lame like you don't have the ability to get up and get out of the situation you're in. But you ought to thank God that there's a Jesus that'll come along and take you by the arm and lift you up and help you walk a little while. Listen, one of the main problems with a bunch of the Pharisees today is they think you're supposed to fly on the first day. There's a discipleship period that goes in there. Amen? There's a discipleship that goes in there. You say, well, Brother Mike, when God healed the man, he leapt and jumped and did all this stuff and praised. We ain't talking about living a Christian life. We're talking about being glad you're not lame anymore. Listen, if you got saved today, you can start shouting today. Yeah, yeah. Amen? You can start hollering about today. I mean, please don't wallow in that grief you've been wallowing in from all your circumstances. Don't do that. I'm not telling you to do that. If you're saved, say amen about it. Huh? If Emmett Smith scored a touchdown, you'd shout about that unless you're an Eagles fan. I'm telling the truth to you. About the only thing that's wrong with some people is the things that excite them is just the wrong stuff. Amen. Start talking about the grace of God. Christians ought to get happy. You start talking about Jesus forgiving you and helping you with some of this stuff. That's the stuff you ought to get happy about. Amen. The problem is you're happy about the wrong things this morning. Amen. When the Lord showed up, he described Zacchaeus the way Zacchaeus described himself. I'm rich. Uh, another fellow in the Bible was rich and had need of nothing. You know why the Lord told us that description about that man that was rich and had need of nothing? Because that's the way that man described himself. And you know what? It doesn't matter what Brother Ken thinks about you or what Brother David thinks about you or what Brother Mike thinks about you. You know what? how the Lord sees you? The Lord sees you how you see yourself. Mm -hmm. The Lord knows what you think about. The Lord knows where your job is. Listen, I was the other night. Uh, I don't know what's wrong with me. There are probably a few mental things going on wrong up, at, up in my head. But I, I found myself about 1 o'clock in the morning the other night sitting in the tow truck, nothing to do. I said, well, I'm three hours over my shift. I guess I better go home. Then I thought to myself, but I don't want to go home. I'm going to drive this tow truck. <laughs> amen. You say, why? Because I like to do it. Amen. I like to do it. 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 And the Lord looked down and seen that and said, well, you are over your shift and all and you could be studying for your sermon. I said, well, let me put this thing up. <laughs> but the Lord sees that. The Lord sees who you are and he knows who you are. And, and the, when the Lord deals with me, he ain't going to deal much with me about your problems. Amen. Or he's not going to deal much with me about your good points. He's going to deal with me about who I am. You know, brother, I was just thinking about your situation. I was just, the Lord laid on my heart a couple of things that I could straighten you out on. 
That probably wasn't God. Now, the Lord will deal with some people like that because you got pastors and you got teachers. And God sent them, God's going to send them with messages. But I can, I, can, I can promise you with all my heart, Brother Mike, I don't sit around thinking too much about Alex. Mm. Or Brother Squeaky. I kissed him on the jaw one time, but I ain't sitting around thinking about him a whole lot. Well, that's a way to get down, amen? That's a way to get down. You're going to find out when Zacchaeus goes to try to start to, to find Jesus, the problem that he has is people. Let's look at it and read it. He says, that, verse number two, he said, Behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus, which was chief among the publicans, and he was rich. Let me just stop there again and say, Jesus knows your situation this morning. You don't have to come explain it to the preacher. And listen, if you want to come and talk about things, we'll pray with you over them. We're glad to hear them. We're glad to try to give you some biblical advice. But what I'm trying to get across to you in the message is God already knows what you're going through. And the main thing, listen, let, can, let me give you something that's going to really help you. This is really going to help you. I promise this is going to help you. Stop trying to get relief. Stop looking for relief. Stop looking for relief. Stop looking for relief. You got problems, troubles, trials. Stop looking for relief and start looking for Jesus. Amen? Amen? I'm telling you, all the relief in this life you'll ever find, you're going to find it in Jesus. You're not going to find it in acceptance. I want you to accept me. I want you to like me. I want you to look at me. I want you to think I'm beautiful. I want you to think I'm rich. I want you to think that I'm successful. I want you to see how good I am. I want you to see how talented I am. Stop that. Stop that right now. You say, why? Because there's no joy in that. If I look at you and I say, wow, you're a great man. You, you're smart. You're Bible, Bible wizard. You're, you're a great Christian. You're a good tow truck driver. You're a master mason. You're a great bulldozer. Whatever affirmation I can give you is not going to do anything for your heart. No, that might, it might boost your pride a little bit, but no, sir. No, sir. No, sir. Stop looking for relief and start looking for Jesus because until you find Jesus, you're not going to find no relief. You're not going to find it. You're not going to find it. You're not going to find it. You know what I found over, uh, over 10 years of being a pastor, and that's not, that's not anything compared to what some people, but I did learn a few things in that time period, and I learned this, that most people, most people are looking for comfort, looking for comfort from the pastor and not from Jesus. Yeah. Now, your, your pastor is to help you get to Jesus, and if you don't understand some, he's to help you understand some things like that and lead you in that sense. But what you ought to be doing is looking for Jesus. Amen. Looking for Jesus. Amen. Stop looking for relief. Listen, Paul asked God for relief three times. And what did I say this message was? This was a message of grace. Now listen, Paul said, God, I got this thorn in my flesh. It's tearing me up. It's eating me up. Have mercy on me. And he said, listen, son, my grace is sufficient for you. Well, you know what? We take that verse and we marginalize that verse and we really reduce that verse down further than what? Oh, grace. Grace, 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 grace with this big. But listen, what that, that verse is really a serious verse. What he's telling Paul is, he said, look here. You can take this thorn away. I can take this thorn away. God can do everything, right? Sure. Let's, be, let's do the cliche Christian thing. God is good. Uh, all the time? Okay, now we've done the cliche thing. Now let, let's get down where the rubber meets the road. Listen, you're better off with whatever problem you've got and God's grace than you are without God's grace and being problem free. He said, look, he said, God, I've got this thorn in my flesh. Take it away from me. God said, my grace is sufficient. The fact that I've dealt with you at all should be sufficient to get you over yeah. what's going on in your life. Last week, uh, I think it was last last Thursday, uh, I've got a, a fell off of one of them manta rays, his roof, two and a half stories up, hit the trailer on the ground down there. But that was 1999. Robbie manta rays, I believe is his name. I was taking the roof off his house, me and Josh. There's a rhyming on the roof, a dangerous situation. <laughs> 
But this wasn't no Ryman's fault. This was Easter's fault. This was stupidity right here. I looked over at Josh. We're up on the peak. We already had it tore off, had all the paper on, had the two-by-fours nailed up, and I said, hey, Josh, look at this. And I was going to ski <laughs> to the bottom of the roof, and there's a two-by-four laid up down there. It's going to stop me, right? Mm -hmm. I picked up more speed and more speed. And when you're falling off the roof, you're supposed to just sit down. But my pants must have been slick or something because I kept on a moving. And I hit that board on the bottom, and instead of just sliding off and landed on my backside, I went head over feet and landed on my face two stories down on the end of a metal trailer I had. Bit my head all around. My neck's been hurting ever since. But last Thursday, that nerve was acting up real bad, and it got in my teeth. And all the teeth on this side of my head was hurting, and my head was hurting, my neck was hurting, my back was hurting. And oh, it's terrible. It's bad terrible. There ain't hardly nothing worse than a toothache. But when you got four toothaches, it's worse than if somebody <coughs> kicked you right there on that shin. You know, that's pretty bad too. I said, Brother Mike, why don't you go get some pills? I don't want no pills. I don't want to be an addict. So all these years when that begins to happen, you know what I pray? I say, God, I deserve this. I deserve it. I don't like it. I don't want it. But if I got what I deserved, it'd be more than just my neck messed up and my teeth messed up. If I got what I deserved, I'd be in hell. And, but you know what I find? I usually find that instead of just going, oh, God, take it away, take it away, I, I find that normally if I say, God, I deserve this, I find out healing always comes faster and relief always comes faster. It always comes faster. It always comes faster when you're looking for Jesus rather than relief. I hope you get relief. I don't want you to misconstrue. I'm not trying to be too hard. I don't misconstrue what I'm saying. I hope you get relief. I hope God takes care of everything and eases every pain and settles every heartache. I hope that happens for you. But I'm telling you, your mindset has to be on Jesus, Amen. not relief. Not relief. Amen. I, I hope you get relief. But I'm telling you, the way to find relief is to find Jesus. Amen. Amen. He said he sought to see Jesus. Verse number three. He says he sought to see Jesus who he was. We'll get back to that in a minute. But look here. And could not for the press because he was little of stature. He said he wanted to see Jesus who he was. But there's a lot of people in the way. A lot of people in the way. So let me say this. First of all, I hope you're not in a hurry this morning. I'm not in a hurry this morning. Amen. Amen. If, you're, if you're in a hurry, get up and leave. But listen here. He wanted to see Jesus who he was. There's a difference in that than just wanting to see Jesus. He said he wanted to see Jesus who he was. Who he was. You know the Jesus you need to find? You need to find the Jesus that is. It's a righteous Jesus. It's a holy Jesus. He said, but the little Lord Jesus, I love the little Lord Jesus. He's not the little Lord Jesus. The Bible says, though we have known Christ after the flesh, yet know we him no more. He's not little Lord Jesus. He's not the little baby in the manger. You can put on your Christmas play every year and put the little baby doll up there. That's not who Jesus is. Read Revelation chapter 1 find out who Jesus is. Amen? Amen. Amen. And for all the folks who say in contrary wise, Jesus is God the Father. Amen. Jesus is God the Father. Jesus is God the Father. He's God the Father manifest in the flesh. Amen. That's who he is. He's a man of war. Amen. And he hangs out with us weaklings. Mm -hmm. You know, you know what I never imagined? This is a little bit carnal, but uh, some of you Marines in the room, you know exactly who I'm talking about. When I think about Jesus hanging out with me, I think about Chesty Puller hanging out with Barney Five. <laughs> some of you don't know who Chesty Puller is. Chesty Puller is the most decorated Marine there ever was. Talking about a whole chest full of silver stars and valor in combat. And it'd be like somebody like that, a man's man, not in the Air Force. <laughs> hey, but there's a great need for the Air Force. <laughs> Amen. But when I think about him hanging out with Barney Five, it just don't fit, does it? It's just those two guys are not the same. When you look at one, you think, 
Well, maybe what you see when you see me, little old fella, little old skinny fella, little old weakling, little old man. But listen, Jesus come by my way. Yes. Amen. And that's God's grace. But you know what? Zacchaeus, he wanted to see Jesus who he was. Not just Jesus. You got a lot of Jesus in America today. And Jesus superstar and Jesus is just all right with me and Jesus is my friend and you know this hippie kind of religion. Jesus ain't no hippie. Jesus is not a hippie. Jesus is a man. Jesus is a righteous man. Did you know Jesus wouldn't hang out with you at a rap concert? He might come in there and try to get you out. You know what would bother me when I was listening to the wrong music and Jesus come in and say, I don't like that. Jesus never told me that was okay, not one time. Not once. Every time Jesus ever talked to me about rock and roll, it was negative. A lot of people don't know that Jesus. Zacchaeus wanted to see who Jesus was. He wanted to see Jesus, who he was. You know, Job in the Old Testament, he had a bunch of regulations. He was right. Job was right. Yeah, he was. Hey, in the last chapter of Job, he didn't, the Lord didn't say all of y'all are wrong. He said, all you Job's friends, you're wrong. Job's right. But you know what Job did learn through the whole process? He said, he said to God at the end, he said, hey, I've heard, at, I, I've heard of you. And Job wasn't a skeptic. Job was a believer. He believed what he heard about God. And God said that Job has shewed evil. That means he stayed away from it. Yep. He run from it. Going to get out there. Listen, when they turn on Ice Cube, I'm leaving. Yep. When they bring out the beer, I'm leaving. Yeah, that's where the microphone starts going in and out right there when you start talking about. So Garth Brooks, you turn on Garth Brooks, I'm leaving. Yeah. Amen. So I wonder why the preacher never comes over my house. We're tired of the junk you've got in your house. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I was pastoring that church down there in Georgia for about two years, and some folks started saying, Brother Mike, you don't never come by and visit us. I said, well, that's true. That's true. Come by and see me sometime. Okay. Come down there, and they got a big old stereo system with Garth Brooks laid out all over the... Garth. Oh, Garth. Mm-hmm. Oh, Garth. <clears throat> I said, this right here is why I don't come. This is why I don't come to your house. Because next week when I preach about Garth Brooks, you go, he just done that because he's seen what I... I'll just, let the, I'll just stay at my house and let the Lord give me the message, and that way you can't say, I seen it. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, you come see me at church three times a week, and we'll be okay. Amen? I, I count it a real honor and a blessing that you come and see me three times a week, so let's don't mess it up. Amen. Let's don't mess up a good thing. Amen. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Jesus wouldn't listen to Garth Brooks. The sad thing about that is God gave Garth Brooks his voice. If some of these guys would sing for the Lord. I don't mean that put on singing. I was talking to Jesse last night. You know what one of the weirdest things is going on in churches today. It's Yankees that's trying to sound like country. But that ain't the crap. If I was a Yankee, I'd try to sound country too. <laughs> but it don't sound exactly right. But here's the, here's the dumb part. The Southerners are hearing the Yankees mess up their accent, and so they're trying to bend their already Southern accent to, make, to match the Yankee fake, and it sounds just ridiculous. That's, people are that easy to lead. Yes, sir. Yep. People are that willing to mimic somebody else that they already sound that way. And they'll start... It's so retarded, I can't even... I can't even think of a legitimate way to explain it to you. That's right. Amen. That's the way it is. Yeah. He said he sought to see Jesus who he was. Job said about God, he said, he said, I've heard about you with the hearing of my ears. He said, but now I see you. Yeah. Yeah. 
And I just love myself for it. I mean, I, I've had this experience with God, and I just feel so great about myself. And I think you should feel great about yourself, too, because that's not what it says. That's right. He said, I see you with my eyes, and I loathe myself. He could have just said hated, and I'd been satisfied with the description. But he didn't say hate. He said, I loathe myself. You say, what is loathing, Brother Mike? Let me tell you about loathing. I've worked with a few people, but there's this one fellow in particular that I'm thinking about right now. Oh, and he don't bathe. And he comes to work and works even harder, and it gets worse and worse. Make you want to throw up. You say, how do you feel about that? I loathe it. I love him. Want him to be saved. But I wish he'd take a bath. Amen? Amen? When people come around, when you come near people and they go, <laughs> that's a hint to take a bath. Amen? Amen? You loathe yourself, you try to get away from it. Man, why am I the way I am? I wish I wasn't this way. Amen? He sought to see Jesus, who he was. If you seek to see Jesus, who he is, who he really is, you'll start changing your life around a little bit. There will be a change that happens in your life. Some of you look at some of these preachers, they're always negative, and you think, well, my goodness, man. Well, listen here, something's going on. Something's going on. It's not just, it's not just all on one side. Maybe some of them do need more grace, but it's not all just on one side. Some, listen, some of these Christians went through a period of discipleship in their life, some of these Christians went through some sanctification and some dedication. And Jesse used the term yesterday that I like, made their consecration. And that was very beneficial in their lives. But you know what, you know what upsets a guy? Is when they see somebody come in and make a profession of faith. And they're still out doing dope. And they're still out cussing and putting stuff on Facebook. And then they, you get up to preach. And they see you doing that stuff, that makes them mad. Makes me mad. Yeah. It makes me want to say, hey, shut up. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. But see, we got the grace of God. We pray for you and hope you get smarter and wiser as the day goes by. But I got, I, listen, I got news for you. You're not going to live a consecrated life. Ain't many people want to hear you preach. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. You can talk about grace all you want to. Listen, if you run off with somebody else's wife, I ain't listening to you preach no more. It just ain't going to do it. Oh, but grace, Brother Mike, grace notwithstanding, I'm glad God ain't killed you. If you're still in church, I'm glad you're still in church. You want to take up the offering, want to do something, going to keep my eyeball on you, though. Amen. And then you mess with a kid and we'll throw grace out the window. You can't do nothing. Amen. Is that all right? I want to, let me say it again then. You mess with a little kid, I'm done with you. Amen. Now you Listen, you mess with a kid and come around, you can take your chances all you want to. But there's two or three other Marines in here. One of these days, we're going to catch you. When ain't nobody looking, we're going to beat on you a little while. Amen. 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 So pastor's not supposed to be strikers. I'm an assistant. <laughs> Amen. Don't mess with no kids. Amen. You see all the, listen, you see all these, little, all these little bus kids? You done messed up your life. You done messed up your conscience. You done eat up your time. These little bus kids around here to get safety. You mess with them, we'll whoop up on you. Amen. Amen. And if you're a female messing with them, we got some of these ladies that can scrap pretty good. Amen. Amen. You ladies better watch out anyway. Linda's already got a list when she gets them legs fixed. Some of, some of you's in trouble as it is. Amen. I don't know where that comes. That just come down from the heavens. You just have to take it as part of the, part of the message. Amen. He said. Uh, he said he wanted to see Jesus, who he was. Let me move on. He said. Uh, he said he could not see Jesus. He could not for the press. He's not talking about CNN. Although, I'm very tempted to put CNN in there because they're trying to keep you from seeing Jesus. But he's actually talking about a bunch of people. Bunch of people. When you start dealing with church, there's a bunch of people involved. I heard one fellow one time say, church would be so wonderful if it wasn't for all these people. I got news for you. That's why we're here. 
Listen, all these people that's got problems and they are listening to Garth Brook and all that stuff, that's why we're here. Amen. The people that's been through abuse and they can't get over it, that's why we're here. We are here. You, you're tempted to get upset with people sometimes because they're all about self, self, self. But, you, but the, the, the answer is not, is not coddling and stuff like that. The answer is let them see Jesus. Who Jesus really, and you know who really, Jesus really is? He really is a redeemer. He really is the great physician. He really can fix what's going on in your life. And I think a lot of preachers would probably be upset if people really found that out because then the attention would come off of them. God help you if you're a preacher, you're an attention hog. You're messing people up. You're messing people up. Don't do it. He must increase. I must decrease was the cry of who Jesus said was the greatest prophet they ever was. Amen. Amen. You're welcome. He sought to see Jesus who he was and could not for the press because he was little of stature. You know what he just realized? He's too little. I realized that very early on. <laughs> I graduated two pounds above the minimum for the Marine Corps. I had to be 115. I was 117. I squeaked in. <laughs> Amen. They should call me squeaky instead of you. But if you do, I'm going to be mad. That's Brother Coleman's name, not mine. I know what it's like to be little. Mm -hmm. And old Zacchaeus, the closer he got to Jesus, the more he realized about himself. You know, I, I, when I walk around on a daily basis, because I've been through the indoctrination of the Marine Corps, I'm about eight foot tall. I weigh 400 pounds. I'll knock you out with one punch. <laughs> then somebody like this comes around. <laughs> and I think to myself, how you doing? <laughs> Anybody else like that? No. You think you're something, don't you? No. Uh-huh. I need to give you a visual illustration here. Sometimes when I'm getting my white shirt on, I look down at these arms and I'm like, wow. That's a little arm. That's a little arm. So you know what I've done? I lifted weights all the time. Push up. A missionary come to People's Baptist one time, a black fella, and he had these two boys. They were monsters. They were big boys. Walking around the church like that. After supper, after church, we had a little dinner on the grounds. Got over there, we was eating. Mm, I grilled up some fish and put some hot stuff. Different story. <laughs> we lived in the little apartment, the fellowship hall over there, and these boys walking around. I said, hey. Come in here. I had some weights in there. 40 pounds on each little dumbbell. Curl them up. I'm like, these big boys can't do it. I said, let me see that. <laughs> I began to think, yeah, it's no big deal. But then 10 years later, and I'm bending over a tow truck trying to pull out a five pound strap. <laughs> As big as strong as, listen, you might have pulled off some great feats of strength in your lifetime, but you're getting older, and the older you get, the more you're going to realize who you are. You're not sufficient. Amen. You're not sufficient. Amen. Listen here, I can think about all the training and all the combat stuff and all that. I can think about that stuff till the cows come home, but a fella, fella this big comes up and hits you, you out. You're going out. Yeah. Mm, at, listen, at, as as a Christian, let me say this, as big and bad as you think you are, as smart as you think you are, as righteous as you think you are, one of these days, Jesus is going to walk down the street and you're going to realize you ain't even big enough to see him. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. yep. You ain't even big enough to see him. Amen? Amen? Yeah. Let alone hang out with him, let alone run up and throw your arms. When I see Jesus, I'm going to run up and throw my arms around him. That's a good sentiment. I don't have any problem with the sentiment. It just ain't going to happen. <laughs> Amen? 
Amen? Amen. It ain't going to happen. You say, why? Because you little of stature, and the sooner you find it out, the better off you'll be. Look what he says in verse 4. He ran before and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him, for he was to pass that way. You know where Zacchaeus went to see the Lord? He went to see him where he is. Where he comes, you find out he's going to be someplace, you go there. Amen? You're not going to find him at home in your living room. God's omnipresent. That's one of the big theological terms. That's true. But the Bible says where two or three are gathered, they'll be in the midst. Yeah. Well, I don't like the church and all them hypocrites. Sorry, Jesus likes the church. Yeah. I find it funny that Christians are, find every occasion to forsake the church, but Jesus didn't. Jesus gave himself for it that he could make it without spot and without blemish. That's what Jesus thinks about the church. You're going to find him. You're going to find him where his people are. You say, how do you know? He says, where two or three are gathered in my name, they will be in the midst. Right. Well, my, my uncle tells me, me and God got an understanding. I don't really have to go to church to know God. No, no. You and God don't have an understanding, and you do have to go to church. I say, you do have to go to church. Amen? Amen. Amen. Listen, you got problems, you got to be at home, I understand. God come meet with you. But let me tell you this, the first day you say, I don't have to go to church, I'll just stay home and God will meet with you, he ain't showing up. And whatever that spirit is that is down at your house meeting with you, it ain't Jesus. Amen? You don't hang out with Jesus and get bitter. You hear what I'm saying to you? You don't hang out with Jesus and get bitter. You hang out with Jesus and get better. Amen? All that hanging out down at the house stuff is what got you in trouble. Amen? Amen? Yeah. That's exactly right. When Zacchaeus wanted to see Jesus, he went to see who he was, and he went to see him where he was. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And he, he, you said, we're not saved by works, are we? I agree with you. We're not saved by works. But where would Zacchaeus do if he didn't do some running and climbing? Amen. Look what it says. He says he ran before and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him. Some people don't find Jesus the same reason uh, thieves don't find the sheriff. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. Mm -hmm. We talked about this morning. Some people, not talking about saved or lost, just talking about people. Some people looking for immortality. Some people not. Some people looking for the right way. I would be willing to guess that in a crowd this size, there's somebody actually looking for uh, relief and they're actually looking for something that's going to be right and they're looking for answers may not be saved you may or may not be saved but some of you are looking for answers and if I could point you to Jesus this morning you'd find the answers you're looking for Amen. and the, listen the answer is not how many of these people shake your hand hey all you people listen to me so we get this clear shake people's hand when they come in Amen. but listen you here this morning looking for answers you're not going to get answers from people shaking your hands not going to do that. There are no perfect people in here. There's nobody in here with the answer except for we got the book that has the answers in it. Amen. Well, they don't talk to me and they really, I understand that. I understand that. On the other hand, he that will have friends must show himself friendly. Amen. Amen. And let me give you this tip. The fewer people you hang out with, the better it is. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. More friends cause more problems. I promise you that. But listen, all that stuff aside, a lot of people not looking for Jesus. They're looking for other people. They really are. And, you know, I said these people was keeping Zacchaeus from seeing Jesus. Sometimes the people is self. I'll leave that right there, and we'll talk about that again at another date maybe. But listen here. He said he ran and he climbed up. Some of you are not getting the answers because you've Let me say this. Let me just say it this way. A lot of people are going through hardship. They don't want to go through hardship. They, they really do want relief but they really don't want to stop doing the things that are causing them all the problems. They would rather be able to take dope and not have the consequences. They'd rather be angry and have everybody still like them. They'd, we, I used the reference of the man that didn't take any baths. They'd rather not take baths and still smell good. A lot of people are just that way. They don't want to do what it takes to get the relief that they need. 
Zacchaeus said, man, I live here on Sycamore Street. I got all the money. I got a high priority job. I got a great big bank account. Everybody owes me. Everybody's coming to me. I'm the biggest man on Sycamore Street. But when he, get, when he got right down to it, he realized, hey, I'm just a little guy. There's this man that comes. He's an awfully big man. I mean, He's helping people. He's solving people's problems. He's saving people. He's turning people around. I need to get to him. Until you get to that point, listen, when Zacchaeus finally got Jesus down to his house, and I'm glad Jesus knows exactly, Jesus come down Sycamore Street and coincidentally stopped right under the tree. Zacchaeus done climbed up. I think a good message for Baptists would be you need to rise above it. He couldn't see Jesus for the press. He got higher than that, didn't he? Amen. Well, I'd serve God, but Michael Shane's always getting in my way. <laughs> no, you don't like Shane, do you? Mike, Brother Mike, he's always in my way. People are just that way. Hey, rise above it. Hey, Brother Mike, come on up here where I am. <laughs> Amen. That's what old Zacchaeus did. Zacchaeus, Zacchaeus climbed up above that crowd, and Jesus walked by and goes, oh, you know that's the only time he'd done that. That's the only time he'd done it. He was on the road to Emmaus after his resurrection, walking with those fellas, and they turned off to go in their front door and get something to eat, and Jesus kept on going. He was coming across the sea one night, and the storm was raging. All of his disciples were in the ship, and Jesus come by, and they said, boy, that looks like a ghost coming there. Oh, that's bad. Jesus said, hey, it's me. The Lord wanted. You know what the Bible says? Jesus said it made as if he would go on. And they said, hey, come on. You know, he didn't do that to Zacchaeus. He walked and stopped under that tree and said, hey, boy, come on down. Amen. Zacchaeus was looking for him. I guess his disciples was looking for ghosts. Yeah. Yep. A lot of ghost hunters this day and time. Yeah. Amen. Mm -hmm. right. mm -hmm. He said, Zacchaeus, come on down. When Zacchaeus got Jesus home with him, he said, boy, I believe I've changed my ways. If I cheated anybody, I'm going to repay them fourfold. Restitution going out of church. That's because repentance going out of church. People ain't really getting right with God. They got this hippie Jesus that just accepts everyone as they are. Jesus don't accept you as you are. You can come as you are. We're glad you're here. But you need to leave a little bit different. Amen? Amen. Amen. Zacchaeus got Jesus down and started making some changes. Hey, you know what it's time to do? If you want to see revival, you've got to start making some changes. Amen. If you're going to see some relief in your life, you're going to start making some changes. Listen, Zacchaeus had nothing to offer, but he did do the running, and he did do the climbing, and that got Jesus down to his house. How much scurrying about have you done to make things right? Amen. I believe in making things right. Some of you have been fussing with one another. Preachers fussing with one another. I, I don't know about what, but stupid. Amen. You ought to go to them and hug your neck. Amen. You say, why? Because Zacchaeus paid back four times. Yeah. I mean, you say something mean to another one of these brothers and sisters in Christ, you ought to get up to them after church and talk to them real nice for about 30 minutes. But if most people had to spend 30 minutes with one of their brothers in Christ, they'd cut, cut their own throat. Yeah. I want to talk about me. I want to talk. Uh, me and Brother Allen was in the old diner over there in Smyrna, and we heard that song. I'm like, do you hear that? He goes, man, not only did I hear it, I'm going to memorize it and sing it at church. <laughs> Amen. Has he ever done it? Uh, yes, yeah. he has. Yeah. That's, the, that's the Baptist national anthem. It's about me, man. It's about me. Did you hear what happened to me? Did you hear what happened to Zacchaeus? I'm going to start paying back. That's what repentance does for you. I'm going to start paying back. Hmm. I better not do it. I started to talk about lazy fellas doing some work. That'll be the next sermon. Now, we got the next sermon all planned out already. Lord, we thank you this morning for your goodness and grace. We thank you, O oh God, that you've dealt with us. We undeserving sinners, God. I'm, I'm so glad for the grace of God. I'm glad for these that have been saved. I surely am. 
But God, there's a road we must walk after we're saved. I pray you'd help us to walk it. I pray you'd help us to see you for who you are. I pray, oh God, you'd help us to be mindful of where your presence is. And Lord, there's many churches across the land. I'm not trying to be critical. I, I'm not trying to be critical about anybody in particular. But Lord, there's many churches where your presence is just not there because they're not worshiping the Jesus that the Bible says you are. Lord, you said where we're gathered in your name, there you'll be in the midst. I pray, oh God, you'd help us to get you back in the midst of our lives, in the midst of our living rooms. Many Christians come down to the church house, but they never have church right there at their home. Oh God, help us. Oh God, burden our hearts about walking the right way, and we'll thank you, God, for what you do. In Jesus Christ's name we pray it. Amen, brother. Amen. Let's all stand.